Hey, welcome to another Ask Mark. Today we're doing the secrets of men and I'm answering your questions as an amazing subscriber and I very much appreciate you on this channel. So I grab them and then I answer them all for you. Let's get straight into it today. Before we do though, the book, my book is now available, so make sure you pick up a copy. You can find a link in the description. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button with a little bell so that you can ask your question and get it answered in the next video. We got some space questions today. We got some questions about infatuation, what to do when he ignores you, and how to build up from your own fears. So this is gonna be a good video. Let's kick it off with Shalua. What about giving space in a distance relationship when a guy says he needs space? I freaking hate this situation. As if space, as if someone asking for space isn't bad enough, and then it's like, oh, they're also already a continent away. You're like, oh. These situations suck. Space situations suck at the best of time. Now there's four key principles that I talk about in my longer video just on this concept. That you are the prize as well. You have gotta remember this during space. That space is a normal need for men. Also very important. That he has needs and that you have needs and that you gotta balance them up. And that eventually you've also gotta have the willingness to pull the plug. So the same four concepts from the space video apply to distance. The difference would be when it comes to potentially pulling the plug or considering your own needs, when someone takes space from a distance, they're really giving you nothing anymore, like nothing. Oh, hey, we have our FaceTime calls and now I need space from those, so you can't have nothing, right? So usually what I find is that that, that time period between you giving someone space and you bringing the hammer down, saying, nope, no more, my needs matter too, is shortened, right? So there's usually less time where you're able to sacrifice your own needs for theirs. You say, hey, I know you need a little bit of space, but I'm not gonna tolerate this for a long time. And that's basically the answer. You bring it down and follow, otherwise follow the directions in that video. Second question, this is an interesting one. How much effort is reasonable? Do I compare it to how it was at the beginning? Now, to put this question in context, I did a really cool video that I strongly suggest you watch on the 80-20 rule of dating. And that basically says, take 80% of your perception about how great a man is and the effort he's putting in from the last 20% of the time you've known him. In other words, for the most part, you're only as good as your last performance. And this is how you don't get stuck with, oh, he was great six months ago, but now he's terrible when we've only been dating six months. So the question is, how much effort now is reasonable? Do I compare it to how good he was at the beginning when he was potentially more dopamined up? And the answer is, it's up to you. Right, this is the cool part, and this is why it's so important for my clients to set their vision, to set their standards, to know what, what they want, to set it down. Because once you do that, you've got, a clear, you've got a clear thing on it. Oh, I want someone who communicates clearly and who uh, talks, about, talks about what's important to him, okay? Whereas you might not, say, put someone who, oh, I want him to spend every, I, I want someone who wants to spend every minute of every day with me. Right, that would probably not be a healthy standard. So you, you, you take the pieces that you want and you're allowed to decide them and it doesn't really, you don't have to compare it to how it was at the start under infatuation. Just think, okay, well, how is it now? And am I happy with this now? And if you are, great. If you're not, do something about it. Next question is from Gail. And Gail says, uh, how about if he comments on those videos on TikTok? He doesn't allow me to follow any guys and he does comment on girls' videos like, good baby, I loved you for a month. Ugh. And even posts kiss emojis. Uh, he said he is sorry and won't do it again, but I can't stop and feel bad. It hurts. I told him if it's the other way around, what would he say? And he said, I would be very mad. Well, at least he's honest about this. Uh, he has been super disrespectful here. On the positive side, he has at least acknowledged that he would hate if that was done in return. And he has, at least in some regards, apologized. I think it's important that he feels your hurt here. And I don't really resonate that that has happened yet. I don't feel that he's really given you a proper genuine apology and made clear that he understands your hurt and what you've felt. Uh, and I think that's what you really need from him to feel better here. So I'd recommend you go chat to him again, uh, Gail, and I recommend you say to him, you know, I want to really express and share with you how this has affected me. And, and do it really vulnerably. And hopefully when you do that, he's you have to show a man how his selfishness has hurt you. So hopefully when you do that, he'll become more aware and he'll take ownership, he'll feel the pain, he'll show the remorse. And that's how uh, lovers can bond again. That's how 
every relationship does have things that go wrong where someone is selfish and the rebonding comes when you demonstrate vulnerably how, how it's hurt you and the other person demonstrates they understand that hurt at a very deep level. So if you can have one of those conversations, you might be able to, to get this back on the right track. As it is, what you, your feelings are very valid for it and you deserve, a, you deserve an apology, a real apology, a deep apology where he really feels you and you deserve for this to never happen again. Question number four, this is another good one. Now we had a video where I went to a supermarket recently and talked about the lizard brain. And in that video, I'll put the link in the description below. In that video, we spoke about, okay, men don't do disrespectful behavior because they decide that, hey, I'm gonna be disrespectful. I'm going to lie to this person or I'm gonna show disrespect. Uh, they do it because a fear kicks in, okay? A fear kicks in, stimulates the lizard brain, and then all bets are off after that. So what you're really looking for in a man is a man that can tolerate fear and a man who has a good fear threshold. So this question from Paige is asking, well, how can I have better tolerance of fear? How can I have a better threshold so that I can exude the relationship behaviors that I want and in hence attract a man who has the same threshold? exudes the same level of authenticity, the same willingness to confront his fears, the same level of good behavior that are not triggered by fears. So Paige, great question. I love the question. First, and this is potentially something I'd do with you on a deeper coaching session program, but if you just wanna do this at home, the key is you've gotta first identify where in your previous relationships your threshold has cracked. Okay, so look at the spot where you say, for example, I had a client recently and she said, I've been ghost or I ghosted this guy and we built up all this resentment. I said, trace it all the way back and find where in that relationship did things first, did you first stop being authentic or did you first lie or did you first shy away from a difficult conversation? When did you first do that? All right, so identify that spot. Second, number two, is you want to identify the fear that caused that. So what was the fear in that moment that triggered me to lose my best self, to lose my best behavior, to fall into lizard brain? What was the fear? And then number three, you've got to get in and do the work on that fear. So you've got to expose yourself to it or maybe you've got to do some healing around it or you've got to ask yourself questions, find a space to find. Uh, for example, let's say there was a threat where he didn't text back. And that's something that's happened to you before, just before a guy ghosted you, a guy that really meant a lot to you. This guy was being amazing, but he was just busy that day, didn't text back. But your emotional reaction to that meant that you lost your values and you pushed him away through fear. Okay, so that would be the moment. So the fear at that moment was, he's going to abandon me. And the work you'd have to do around that would be about releasing the energy of the previous guy healing that and reminding yourself you are the prize too and that any guy who walks away, you're gonna be just fine because it's gonna be their loss. And once you've done that, you'll be able to dive into that fear and next time a guy is busy or doesn't text you back, you'll be able to, okay, go into that. I'm not gonna react badly this time. I'm not gonna push him away. I'm gonna dive into my fear here and I'm building my threshold, right? You're like lifting the emotional weights. That's how to raise your threshold, but you have to do the work. If you want to do the work with me, fill out the coaching application form in the section below. If you just want to do it on your own, find that point, identify the fear, work on the fear. Great question, Paige. Fantastic question. Uh, Annie says, is this your garden at home? It's beautiful. How are you doing in this weird time? Annie, thank you for asking. I'm doing fantastically. Quarantine has been beautiful for me. I've spent a lot of time with my cat. I've spent a lot of time working with clients and I've spent a lot of time creating content and new programs. So it has been one of the best things that ever happened to me. I appreciate you asking. Merkwood says, Mark, thank you so much for this video. This is on the five ways to make him chase you video. One of my very first videos. I did completely the opposite of what you said in this video and got my heart broken. Uh, I completely get the concept, just a bit lot on, lost on how to practice it. Does the rule, don't give him boyfriend benefits, work in practice? Or how does it work in practice? For example, would you leave right after sex? Well, or not be as emotionally supportive if a man has not claimed you as his girlfriend? Thank you. 
Uh, one of my favorite videos, actually, it's not got the most views on the channel, but it's one of my favorite videos. I'm gonna put it on a card and on the link in the description, talks all about this. And with boyfriend benefits, it's like going to the gym, right? You know how when you join a gym, or at least when you used to before we got stuck at home, you would go in there and they would give you a, a free week pass or a free one day pass, right? Gyms don't hold back on what they have to offer. They give you everything. They just hold back on the access to it. So you don't get it whenever you want. Right? You're not gonna hold back your energy, your supportive energy, even your sex if you wanna enjoy it. You're gonna, that's you. You're gonna step into that and own it. But what you might do is you might not be willing to give that to him all the time if he's not willing to do the same in return for you. So that's the outline of it. Go and watch that other video if you wanna know the answer to this question. It's a really good video, I really like it. Go and watch this video because it talks about how to apply the concept of boyfriend benefits uh, when you're in that dating phase and it's a bit like, oh, am I giving too much to this person, too little, am I holding back? That'll clear all that up for you. Nobody asks, what if he ignores like no text message? What if he ignores like no text message, no call, getting online uh, and still no response, even when nothing wrong happened? Um, someone like that is just genuinely not worth your time. There's really no simpler way to put that. I'm gonna move on to the next question. Sandy says, uh, do you know Ash from 90 Day Fiance? What are your thoughts on him? No, I do not know Ash from 90 Day Fiance. And I'm kind of glad that I don't because I feel like if I did, it's one of those TV shows that I get to the end of and I'd say, that was an hour I'll never get back. The next question is from Maddie, and Maddie says, uh, don't all relationships start with infatuation and then develop to deeper love within a year or within months? And that's a great question because certainly growing up, that was what I thought. And, and even you know, 10 years ago, yeah, everyone just falls in love, you're infatuated, and then you have to kind of, it's almost the rough landing, right, after infatuation. Infatuation is the firing of dopamine. And especially when it's extreme, you get infatuated, you get addicted to someone. Uh, and it's very true, there's a come down from that because that can't last forever. But do all relationships have to start that way? Not at all. I would say most relationships start with some degree of dopamine bonding. And men and women are designed that way so that we attract to each other and we, we want to invest in each other. Uh, but there's plenty of relationships that start with not much chemistry or even none at all. And of course, those are people who start as friends. And sometimes those are the healthiest relationships. So I will say this, typically the most infatuation that you have with someone the more of a rough landing you have and the more of a come down you have with that person later on. So if you have less infatuation, less dopamine firing, you'll have an easier transition into a real deep and meaningful relationship that isn't driven by blind dopamine, but that's driven by unconditional love. Uh, what else we got here? Ruby says he needs time. Uh, that means he needs space, right? That is correct, Ruby. Said if I feel about you, I'll come back by checking all my Insta statuses. Ugh. Guys do this all the time, which is we get the space and then as soon as we've got the space, we miss you again. And one of the simplest things we can do when we miss you but we don't want to initiate with you is to watch your stories. Check your status, watch your stories, basically monitor from a distance. And it's, it's really frustrating behavior for you because you sit there going, well, he's pulled away but he's still coming towards. He still wants to know where I'm at, like what the hell? And you don't move on for months because you've got this guy who's away, but not fully away that he's actually allowing you to go and bond to someone else, to actually move on. So I really uh, have a thing against this behavior. I don't like it. I think it's really rude. Uh, but basically you've got to put a boundary around it if you don't like it, where you say, look, you're either investing or you're not. And if you're not, that's great. Move out of the way to someone who can. And if you are, that's great. Step up, sir. Those are the two options the guy gets. If you can have him watching your statuses without it bothering you and you can move on, fine, then do that. But if it's stopping you moving on, uh, put a boundary in place in some regard. Uh, and the final question is from lovely Cindy. And Cindy says, there is a wonderful man who always keeps tabs on me. He is supportive, friendly, and smart, uh, but doesn't take things further. Why the interest but no follow-up? Is it my vibe? Don't know. Uh, Cindy, this one's a little hard to answer without the context and knowing a bit more about you. Possibility number one is he genuinely just wants to be your friend. 
and it's just a purely friend thing without the romantic attraction. Possibility number two is he's one of those guys that really just likes to serve women and feel useful and finds it's validating for him to do so. Uh, that could certainly be a thing here. You, you just meet those guys where they really just want to give to women all the time and, and it can feel like romantic interest when it's really just him kind of wanting to validate himself through you and it can be a good or a bad thing. Uh, or number three is he actually is into you but he's really shy. So I think the best thing you can do here, especially based on one and three, is, is fire off some attraction interest signals yourself, which is give him something pretty solid, like, hey, it'd be great to see you. If you haven't already done that, it'd be great to hang out. I'd love to catch up with you. Um, or do you know, give him some like, oh, it's like, I love it when a guy says that. Or um, uh, like, that's, oh, you're gonna have to ask me out and show me this. You know, give him something really clear that he can grab onto. Because once you've done that, it's super easy. If he doesn't take you up on it, Sweet, he's just some guy who wants the validation from being a BFF. Hope that clarifies it for you, Cindy. Hey, those are all the questions for today. Make sure you grab a copy of the book and there's a bunch of free downloads too. All heaps of free downloads, texting guides and sexting guides and top 10 guides to male dating personalities that will lead to heartbreak is all in the description below. So hit the subscribe button with the little bell, leave your question in the space below and I'll see you in the next video real soon.